Welcome back to Worldview. Now, joining us today on the program is a very funny, very witty woman by the name of Juliana Forlano. She writes and produces a program on YouTube called Absurdity Today. And when I began to look back and think about all of the crazy things that have gone on over the last two weeks about Chris Christie and Bridgegate and did he or didn't he and the mayor of Hoboken and all of the craziness that's going on, there's only one person, a New Jersey native, who it happens to be her birthday today. Juliana Falano, welcome back to Worldview. Thank you, Dennis. It's wonderful to be here. Uh, a brief correction, I am not a New Jersey native, uh, but I'm from the tri-state area, so it is kind of all mashed together. Well, and that, that, that's, you know, one of the funny things that has, that has come out as a result of this is that, you know, nobody would normally pay attention to New Jersey and, and the politics, which is how the corruption has been allowed to, to grow the way it has because you're part of the New York market. What is going on as of this moment, as far as you can tell, with Chris Christie and Bridgegate and the Hoboken mayor? Let's start that. Well, I think the best way to sum this whole thing up is, I don't know if you saw, but um, Jimmy Fallon did this great piece where he uh, did a parody song with the boss, uh, Bruce Springsteen, being from New Jersey. Um, but what I thought was, you know, the, the, the way to sum down this whole, or sum up this whole Chris Christie thing is if the boss just sang his his other song, the one, you know, I'm going down, you know, the one, do you know that song? You have to see if you could put a clip into it without infringing on anyone's copyright. Just, I think Chris Christie is going down. I mean, I read yesterday, that uh, Olympic athletes are saying that Chris Christie, <laughs> that Chris Christie bullied them too. Uh, mayors are coming out of the woodwork saying that Chris Christie bullied them. They're starting a support group for each other. The the I've been bullied by Chris Christie uh, group. You know, uh, it's I I don't think this is going away. Well, what makes this so appealing from, from a political standpoint? Because you know, when you look at the polls, uh, for some inexplicable reason, he's still pulling well into the mid 50s as high as 60 65 percent favorability and one of the things i can't seem to understand is you know you you're clearly dealing with someone who has you know these tendencies to push people around and and, and has rather sharp elbows uh how does he continue to, to to attract so many people as as potential voters for his presidential bid I have no idea. I think that's an excellent question. I wish I had a better answer to it because those numbers baffle me. It makes me think, are these numbers possibly correct? I mean, I'm a comedian, I'm doing a service to either Democrats or hopefully uh, more progressive candidates just by making Chris Christie into sort of a joke. I mean, he's done it to himself. Uh, there's the way he treats people. There's the way he screams and shouts at teachers and people in unions. Uh, there's his general, look at me, I'm your friend, Chris Christie kind of way of being. And then there's what he's actually doing. And those two things do not match up. I mean, Chris Christie did not win because he uh, ran on a conservative platform that, he, you know, that he was like, yes, I'm going to rile up the base. And I think these ideologies are are, are going to be winning. No, he ran on his personality of, I'm your neighbor, I'm the guy who come in and help you out. And then as it turns out, he helps out whatever's political expedient, uh, politically expedient for him, and he, he dis disregards, you know, his voter base. It's a problem. And he's a giant joke. I mean, the man is a huge joke now. His name is synonymous with a joke. When you think Chris Christie, you think Bridgegate, you think Obesity. I mean, that's what you think. You think bully. That's this is what people are thinking. And um, I really don't. I I know that in Europe, people think of most of America as like, you know, obese ignoramuses. That's a general one of the things that I'm sure when I'm not on, you're making fun of us as you know, it's fine because a lot of us are. But I, <laughs> I mean, but I would hate to have Chris Christie as the you know, the president of the United States, just for that reason, his policies aside, they're so pro Wall Street They're I don't think they're really going to do anything for this country. But just to have the face of what everyone is making fun of America for, be the face of America, be the leader of America. Plus, he's, you know, a hot button kind of temper guy. Do you really want his finger next to the button? Not I don't. I don't really want him in charge of foreign policy. I was saying before, he's sort of like George W. Bush. 
you might want to have a beer with him. You might feel like I had an uncle like this guy. That's why, you know, but I don't want him in charge of interstate commerce or foreign policy or peacekeeping the Middle East. This is not, you know, a beer. A beer is where it ends. Well, you know, interesting. Most people here in the UK have a very difficult time trying to understand what, you know, this is all about, you know, and, and you know, here we are essentially a day out from having celebrated the end of the fifth year of the Obama presidency. So there's still three to go. And already people are talking about handicapping a race that's still three years away from, from actually almost three years away from happening. Yet you've got these almost cartoonish characters just like you had in 2008 when, and in 2012 when the, the seven dwarfs and the Republican Party took the stage. Does anybody, I mean this guy heads the Republican government Association. Does anybody see how ludicrous all this is in terms of, you know, trying to rebrand and, and, and resurrect the Republican brand in the United States? Uh, yes, uh, maybe not the Republicans, but the rest of us do see that this is just an effort in futility. I mean, if we face facts, the Republican Party has been co-opted by, you know, the 1% by very rich corporations. They're not for the people. They've never been for the people. They they have issues that people care about, things like, you know, social issues, gay rights, or, or squashing gay rights, I guess. They, they, they haven't embraced gay rights. Um, uh, you know, a, a abortion. They've taken these social issues that people can kind of get behind and, and, and that people really do care about. And they've said, we care about them too. But I think if it was politically expedient for them to not care about them or take a different position, they would. Because the Republican Party is the party of the corporations. And they're all... I mean, people want to vote for someone they think, hey, maybe this guy's partially good. That's why we voted for Obama. We thought, hey, maybe this guy, he's intelligent. He was a, you know, a community organizer. Maybe he's going to be, be a person of integrity to a greater degree than, you know, we've seen in the past. Maybe he's not going to be a sellout to these big, um, big moneyed interests. The Republican Party doesn't have anyone like that. They have fools in the Michelle Bachman campaign or, or in, in the Michelle Bachman category. And they have, you know, people who, if you dig down deep enough, you're going to find uh, corruption in the Chris Christie uh, campaign. I don't think Chris Christie is an unintelligent man, but I think, you know, the corruption runs deep. And it's, it's kind of unfortunate because it seems like our political system in general, if you're going to get anywhere, you got to you're going to get dirty. Well, yeah. it's, it, it, and, and the other issue you've got going is this, this front runner tag that, that seems to be put on everybody, you know, and it, it's almost as if it's the kiss of death, particularly this far up. I mean, I can remember, uh, you know, when we were looking, even going back to 2008, you know, Hillary was the front runner as with Rudy Giuliani and where are they, uh, you know, and, 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 and the American electorate selected somebody with the name Barack Hussein Obama. I mean, these things have got to be uh, great fodder for you as a comedian and a, and a satirist. Well, as you know, Dennis, the uh, the media is on 24 hours a day. We have 15 cable networks trying to fill time and they don't fill it with things that are anti-corporate. So they don't fill it with things that might get people upset. For example, they're dropping a, uh, I live in, in um, New York City uh, on an island that is connected to Brooklyn and they're dropping a pipeline uh, for natural gas with all its explosive tendencies right under the only escape route if, if there should be another hurricane like the one that hit this area two years ago, right? So these are the kind of things that if they actually covered them on the news, there might be a popular out, outburst. So they have to cover things like Beyonce's jiggles and uh, who the front runner is. I mean, talking about runner over and over for 24 hours a day really does nothing. Doesn't educate you doesn't make for more educated populace. It, you know, it calls into mind, like, who cares about the bridge? I care. I don't care. But none of that actually matters. When Are they talking about Chris Christie's ties to Wall Street? I only know that because I read things on the independent media and I watch Democracy Now. You don't hear that very much on CNN. Well, folks, she's Juliana Ferlano. She's larger than life. And we've spent quite a bit of time today talking about Chris Christie, who has also become quite larger than life in more ways than he would perhaps choose to be remembered. <laughs> Thanks so much for taking the time to join us today. Thanks, Dennis. I love your show. Oh, thank you so much. Remember, folks, do watch Absurdity Today. You can reach her at www.absurditytoday.com. We'll be back after this.